With the first pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Paolo Bancaro from Duke University. Getting the love from his family, proud of his roots from Seattle. We've talked about a little bit our love for our hometown. He also attended O'Day High School, which is the brother school to my alma mater. What do you think is the best part about growing up in Seattle? For me, it was just the relationships I built, you know, whether it was at school, at the Boys and Girls Club. That's where I learned to play basketball at, you know, playing there since kindergarten, born and raised in that gym. Great move by Rhonda Smith. Rhonda Smith scores. Your mom is a legend. I grew up going to your games, Rhonda, with my Uncle Jackie, and it was amazing. What a play by Rhonda Van Caro. How has that impacted you and your game? Growing up, I never saw my mom play, but it was like, what, you did that? You were, you know, people really, <laughs> really think of you, you know, that you were this legendary basketball player, but she got inducted into the Hall of Fame. You realize, like, how, how big of a deal she was, and definitely motivated me to try and be at that same level. At that same level, or did you try to beat her? Yeah, I definitely, <laughs> definitely try, you know, try and beat her, but she's a legend. He's so athletic. Bancaro gets a lot of his basketball IQ and acumen from his mom. What signature move did you have that Paolo has included in his game? <laughs> I would say probably most known for just a real simple drop step, layup. Moves wise, I would say probably like drop step, spin, just the competitiveness she played with on the court. Rhonda, you said expose your male child to the female game. How do you think that exposure has impacted Paolo? He was seven, maybe seven or eight, I think, when I started coaching. But he was tall, and we just put him out there. And, you know, the girls were taller, faster, stronger. They still are bounce pass and set and screens, backdoor cuts. So I think he had an opportunity to really hone in on those fundamentals. You know, they talked a lot, like mm -hmm. girls talk on the court. Mm -hmm. but, you know, as you get older and the higher level you go, you know, you realize how important, you know, the communication mm -hmm. piece is on the court. You know, it made me kind of enjoy, you know, watching women's basketball, and mm -hmm. I still do to this day. I don't know if you have a favorite player, but is there one where you're like, ooh, she might be able to get me in a one-on-one -on -one game? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I really like, I always like Candace Parker, uh, just her being so tall, but being so versatile, you know, just to see that in the women's game, you know, I feel like she was kind of ahead of her time. Bancaro, wow. Was there a moment where you were like, okay, this is a, like a legitimate real thing. He's gonna do this. He was a freshman. He was playing two years up in an AAU tournament. And the second time he touched the ball, he dribbled down the middle and had like this poster Statue of Liberty dunk. Mario and I looked at each other and we were like, Okay, like, <laughs> okay, he's good. He's gonna be fine. I remember taking a deep breath, like, okay, I belong here. Other than your mom, who I'm assuming is one of your favorite Seattle ballers, who are some of your others? Yeah, I would say Jamal, it's just because all the ways he gives back. You know, he's always been, you know, a big brother to me, and he never really asked anything of me other than, you know, when I get to point he's at to do the same thing he's doing for, for the next kid. And then growing up with the Storm, um, Sue Bird. Seattle Storm of the team we will always remember. She's a legend in the city, you know, brought, brought the city championships, really just trying to help continue to put Seattle basketball on the map. You know, I plan on doing a lot of stuff, you know, with, with the youth. Uh, what are some of the things that you're planning on doing? I think just being there for kids, you know, not maybe not doing stuff that gets put out to the media all the time, but just being accessible to to kids coming up, you know, knowing that they can talk to me and reach out, you know, because I literally was was in their same position, you know, playing the same gyms they did, play for the same coaches that they did. So just letting them know that, you know, it may seem far away, but you know, if you really want it and you really work, it's not that hard to attain. Bancaro, good handle and a soft touch. I think he's as skilled a 6'10 player as Mike Krzyzewski's had. What's the most um, significant advice Coach K has given you? He told me every time you walk in a room, you're going to catch everyone's attention. So, you know, you always got to be on point. You got to have a strong face. You got to look upbeat like people can approach you. 
it, it carries on the court too, you know, don't show fatigue, you don't show weakness, always keep a strong face and, and a strong and strong body language um, on and off the court. How will you use the platform that the NBA provides to also speak out and advocate for really important social justice related causes? I think NBA players have some of the biggest voices, not only in sports, but just in the world. People are fans of NBA players, so if you speak out against it, it's a good chance that your kids or fans are gonna are gonna follow suit and you're trying to push for the right thing. It became kind of less of an option um, in 2020 when we all watched George Floyd, um, of course, Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery as well. Was there a certain point for you that same year where you were like, oh, speaking out against these things is not an option, like we have to do more? I've always paid attention and, and seen that stuff. Uh, but I, I definitely would say like George Floyd around that time, that's when it was kind of like, you know, you kind of felt like you had to do something. And so I would say like, that was really when I started to really, really pay attention and, you know, look forward to using a platform like this to speak against it and hopefully try to, you know, eliminate it. You had a life-changing experience with law enforcement in Seattle. Can you talk about that? Me and one of my close friends, we were at a concert and we were in the car leaving the concert and we had been mistaken for, uh, for somebody else. And so cops, you know, they came up to us, pulled, pulled guns and, you know, told us to get out the car. And yeah, that was, that was when I was 15. So that was a rough experience, but you know, I learned a lot from it. You know, it helped me. You know, sometimes you think that that type of stuff can't happen to you or won't happen to you, but, you know, it kind of, you know, gave me a reality check and, you know, really made me kind of wake up to the issue. Yeah. Rhonda, how did that impact you? You weren't with him. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, as, as a parent of a, of a black child or, or brown child, you don't think if you, you know what's going to happen. You just know. And it's unfortunate fact in our society, but you just, you do know. And so my, my husband, who's white, um, we had talked about this a lot before it happened. So he called and, and, and told me what happened. And for that, that moment, you, you hope as he's talking, he's, you know, it's kind of this crescendo's coming and, and you're like, what are you gonna say at the end of this? Yeah, we're just happy that they, that they both came home. We're all following closely holding our breath, waiting for Brittany Griner to return home. I'm curious to know what the league could be doing, what you would like to see the league do to get Brittany home. Yeah, I mean, like you said, hopefully she's home soon. Um, the league is, I think, has a lot of a lot of pull. Um, it could really help her out. Um, and I'm sure they're, they're working to do that. Uh, but, you know, it's just unfortunate, you know, seeing someone who's being held against their will. Um, so, you know, far from home, away from her family, you know, not playing, you know, the sports she loves. So, you know, hopefully the league can do whatever, whatever really in their power, you know, to bring her home. How much um, has Brittany's situation impacted you knowing that your mom also played overseas? A lot. I mean, especially, you know, my mom playing back then, you know, there was probably worse that could have happened and wouldn't have had the same coverage or, or media, um, you know, just for being a different time. So. It makes you thankful that, you know, that nothing did happen. Um, but it also puts in perspective, you know, the risks that women's players have to take playing overseas. Carroll, step back three. He's got it! Big Carroll hammers it home. Big Carroll stuffs it home. You know it's coming. You still can't stop it. What will you be known for on the court? I want to be known for, I think, just my my attention to detail um, of the game. Being a big, bigger player, I feel like, you know, my skills what separates me and my versatility, but also being known as a, as a great leader and a player that guys want to follow and want to get behind because they have a lot of trust in me. How about off the court? Really want to be known as a, as a good person, a humble person, a guy that never outgrew the people and the places that, you know, made me. Nice to meet you guys. I want to always show love and respect to the people who were there from the start. I want you to turn to your mom, just maybe acknowledge this really important moment and the path she paved on the court first. Mom, big thank you. You know, you've been there since the start. You know, I'm proud of us, you know, just where we've been at, but it's not the end. I think it's the beginning, you know, of a new journey. Oh.
things. <laughs>